Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, bit of a meme fit Proteus. I've been flying this on and off over the last like couple of months and I'm really sorry I can't remember who actually linked it in the channel for us. So if you do know, then full credit to you dude. I'll definitely put your name in the credits or whatnot because uh, this is definitely not my thing. I didn't come up with this at all. Just wanted to get that out of the way. So yeah, we're going to take a look at this oversized propulsion Proteus, which is really nice just for like escape and stuff and that. Uh, the video clips I'll show you are going to be more focused on the actual mechanics of the ship and like how it's really cool and stuff versus like loads of fights. And uh, there's a bit of a like a, a weird bot farm system at the end. I'll put all the things like the fitting and the fights and all that sort of stuff uh, in chapters for easy viewing for you guys if you want to just skip through. And um, there'll be some other fits from a couple of friends at the end, which are like really much, much better than this. Uh, like I say, it's just a bit of a meme fit. So let's uh, take a quick look. All right, there it is, guys. So we've obviously got the just a compact version of this. It is pretty cheap, I would think, for uh, just a standard sort of Proteus or whatnot, uh, like a bit of a meme fit one. So 647 mil, I think it's not too bad. Uh, you could spend like a way more ton of cash on this thing and get it like much, much better. Uh, yeah, but let's start with the subs. So the first one is, of course, the covert sub. So we're roaming around null second things and low sec looking for fights. And we can use the covert ops clock just to keep it a little bit safer. We are going drone focused on this. So we're going to be using the drone subsystem. Uh, the localized injectors, which give us a 15% reduction in afterburner and mic warp drive capacitor consumption. That's going to be important in a second, as well as 10% benefits to overheating my warp drives and afterburners so that's basically less cap used and faster and the friction which gives us all of our warp scrambler and disruptor again which is really handy on this ship because we're going to be like fighting at pretty long ranges and controlling like an oversized prop uh, cruiser with a 500 mm on is pretty hard you know you probably see in the coming eclipse my pilot is absolutely terrible i'll have to apologize for that now Really, I'm feeling pretty rusty at uh, EVE at the minute. I haven't really been playing too much. But yeah, they're the subs, so they allow all of the, the fit in here. So we'll just start from the top. We've got the small Gremlin Compact Energy Newts. Now, these are mainly just for when you get tackled on things, like maybe off a Ram Jag or a Malediction and stuff. I didn't really use these too much, um, apart from, like, newting out the odd Ishtar, like, to break his tank or whatnot, whatever, if you use, like, XL, yeah, XL Shield Booster fit, sorry. We've got the, the PvP Pro Blancher, the expanded one, so you can actually scan down ships like AFK and, and systems and things. Uh, more on that later when we're, we'll come to the, the Ishtar bot form uh, clip towards the end. We've got the Drone Link Augmentator, which increases our drone control range. Again, all like sort of synergizing in with like fighting at long range and stuff because controlling this thing's like just an absolute pain in the arse. And we've got the, the couple of pimp mods on here, the Kaldori Navy Warp Disruptor and the Scram. So you can see the range is 36 cold, which is super nice. And the 14k on the Scram, if we just heat these. You can see we got like a massive 48k and 19k on the Scram. So the Scram as well is like really good for defensive purposes. You know, if like a Scepter's coming in towards you and you're burning away. But really, like... You can get away from like most frigates in this because you can do ridiculous speeds, which we'll uh, get to in a sec. Uh, just a cheap damage control. I wish I could fit a T2 on, but it, it doesn't. If you do, you've got to use like a implant, which is like just needless. We've got a couple of drone damage amps just to help our damage, of course, for the drones. Nano fiber, which is nice. I would like two of these. I might drop a, a drone damage just for another uh, nano. Maybe the next time I take this out, just to see how it'll fly, because. It's not too bad, but again, like if you've ever flown over prop ships, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like turning a bus sort of thing. And we've got the medium ANSI repper for the tank. Now, the tank itself isn't great. Um, literally just the damage control and the ANSI rep pretty much is all that's going to be keeping them alive. But the general premise of this is that you're going to be going so fast, you're not going to be taking too much damage. You're going to be outrunning drones and things like that. And... Um, Mitigating a lot of it that way, even though the SIG's going to be pretty high or whatever from the mic warp drive. But it's definitely not like a, a frontline brawly ship, this one. That like 100% not. So don't like just go to zero on an Ishtar and expect to win or something or a, like a Demos or something because you'll just get wrecked. A um, couple of really cool things about this is the... Um, I skipped over that drone. So the drone navigation computer. So this increases the mic warp drive speeds of drones. 
and obviously you get the fight ads, but we're not really using that yet. So we'll get a 30% speed bonus there. And the drone speed augmentator as well. So we'll get an extra 20%. I'm not sure if that actually stacks or whatever, or it's multiplicative or whatnot. We'll have to take a look sometime. So that means our heavy drones, if we can just have a look. We've just got Praetors here. And if we just scroll down... You can see the velocity they do is like 3,800, which is uh, actually pretty insane for heavy drones, to be honest. You can keep up with most like frigates at that speed. And it's really handy because if you're like flying around like 5, 6k a second and things, uh, probably high if you're overheating, you can pull the drones in and everything and they will actually come to you within a reasonable time. So that's, uh, that's pretty nice. And the light drones, I believe, are even more ridiculous. So we've got some hornets in there just because, like scepters and things. And these go like 8.6k, like with a micro warp drive on, so it's pretty good. Obviously, they'll settle down once they hit the orbits and things. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, the, the speed's pretty trick. Obviously, you could uh, knock this out for a web, like a defensive web, and the scram would be really nice. So it's just take your pick. But again, we're, we're just running the fit that I was linked in the channel from like ages ago. Again, sorry, I can't remember who gives it, but yeah, it's uh, super fun. And fun's pretty much all I've been like after in the game this little while. I've, I've done quite a lot of care bearing and stuff. I'm um, just saving clips up. We've got still tons of PvP footage from the corp to show you guys. Uh, just a couple of last things as well, just before we jump into the clips. If you're going to be roaming around null second things, I would 100% take a mobile depot and some spare drones. I did have like a full stack in here, but I've obviously been defanged uh, previous to making this vid off Ishtar on a station, which was pretty fun. So yeah, definitely take that because it will save your life. And also, I did forget to just go over how fast this thing goes. I do apologize. So cold, we go just over 5k. And if we heat, that's 8,555, which is pretty like madness, right? And I would definitely recommend overheating your first cycle at least just to get that big acceleration going. And uh, that'll punch you out into some safety net, hopefully. Okay, let's get on with the clips. Okay, here we are on the first clip, guys. So this was literally the first time I took this ship out with fly. I uh, popped an overclocker there just for a little bit of extra speed on the micro warp drive. And we did find this camp once I went up to like MTAC O and ATAC just to have a, a bit of a play with. So I made some bookmarks around the place and I actually slow boated to them for about 50 kilometers before getting to them. And uh, I was glad he missed that first hit. I had a bit of a transversal on his guns there. So yeah. And his Jag Buddy or his ult starts coming in. Just do a little bit of a turn there, just in case I did get a big wreck and blow. I'm not sure if you would be able to alpha us, but I think it might be pretty close on the fit since it's just literally just like damage control for tank. So the Jag comes in like for a slight tackle. And I think he backs off a little bit because the Malediction's coming now. So in comes the Malediction, definitely in for the, the Ram Scram. So I'm like hoping, yes, get the Newts on. Now the drones I'm noticing aren't like tracking the targets i mean even though they're like super quick with the small sigs of the frigs and the scepters they're just not doing as much damage did get a little bit of a hit there but it took us quite a while to actually pull the drones in and then just get the light drones out and you'll see it they just absolutely smash this guy and uh yeah he has got a nos so i'm still like per my scram pretty much even though i've got like all the newts on him but uh, i think it would definitely help that and that's pretty much gg for that fight so just a little bit of a showing off the clock there you know just like getting in close you can sneak up on people and things and we'll just recall with drones here and go to a safe and then we're just able to cloak and disappear so there was like tons of other stuff came after this which i knew obviously because frat you know i didn't want to stay on grid too much and fight the gnosis or whatnot but yeah that was the the, the successful first fight on this on this clip i just wanted to highlight escape and gate camps and stuff now granted there was no fast tackle here but generally like a lot of small gangs and stuff are just going to be flying cruisers or whatnot and uh yeah i was able just to breeze away from these guys super quick the osprey navy not doing like hardly any damage as well when i'm going these ridiculous speeds one thing i really want to get changed though is the drone like targeting range you can see i'm still like locked off these drones so i can't cloak or anything and that's one of the most annoying things about flying this. If you you get in range and stuff and the drones have got you locked from like hundreds of kilometers away. But it is what it is. But yeah, just a, a little quick clip there just to show you the escapability of this thing, which is like absolutely insane. 
All right, time for something a little bit more fun. So when you're roaming around Null and you get all the, the Rata guys, whether the bots or real players and things, a lot of them will just warp to the Citadel. That's theirs. And they'll just sit right on the edge of the Teller range, right? So the cool thing about this ship is once you get yourself lined up and things, which I did here, I did a bit warping around just to get this like alignment point, just so he bounces off the perimeter. And we're just going to align to this guy and then we're just going to overheat the mighty warp drive and hopefully we'll be doing about 8k a second at this guy when we hit him and he'll just be bounced like completely out of the tether range and we'll be able to kill him. So yeah, this is, uh, I didn't realize... I didn't like have a plan in my head about doing this when I was flying the ship. It just just became a bit of afterthought. And yeah, you can see, I mean, we're not even doing like anything crazy. We're, we're doing like 4K there. And you can see we bumped him nearly 3K a second. So he's like well out of tether range now and we can just uh, kill him. So if it's bots and things, you know, you can like just do the job easily. I don't think this guy even shot us back, but there was some stuff that like came off the undock and Ishtar or whatever, but... I didn't really get any aggro here, apart from like right at the end. So I'm guessing he was like trying to figure out what was happening or whatnot. But yeah, just a, a bit of a, just a maximum boop, if you'd like call it that. Yeah, there's that Ishtar. But uh, the dude's helped as well because he was like a passive tank and we switched his invuls off or whatnot, I think. So he did take a little bit to chew through. We are running at like 60% uh, speed here. And if you just notice the cap as well, I didn't touch on that in the fit, but we are cap stable when we're just running the Mighty Warp Drive and the points. If you switch on the newts and the Mighty Warp Drive all at once, like everything running and the rep will only last in like a minute and a half. So that's one of the downfalls of this. We're, we're not really like cap stable with everything, but I think for the most part you can get away because a lot of the time you're going to be pulsing your Mighty Warp Drive anyway. And there goes the gear. So yeah, the, the, just a cool little thing you can do. I've killed quite a lot of stuff doing that actually and um, yeah it catches people off guard. Okay coming up there was a, a situation where I was, I'd been roaming around a little bit and I was getting a little bit bored so I decided just to take the obvious bait which was this Tempest just chilling off the station. He MJD'd away I think and yeah it was just like complete obvious bait but it sort of highlights the, the need for having sort of like a super long point right like a 48k point so we can just literally hold this guy here and uh, start shooting them with the drones and I was obviously expecting like a hot drop or something to come or just like a bunch of bombers or whatever so I decided just to hold this guy just get aligned see what this guy was doing and I mean you could tell a mile away it was like obvious bit so you can see that I'm like preheating everything just getting ready and what ends up happening spoiler alert there is a, a like a little hot drop happens and Honestly, I wish I'd stayed on grid for this because I think we could have had a really like cool skirmish like minus the cap issues we, we got off the, the redeemer that comes. But yeah, so we're just holding this guy forever. We're all keeping a, a really good range. So sort of like just over like maximum heated T2 point range, I would think. I, I wasn't thinking he had like any like crazy long point or whatever. And just to hold us, I mean, we could escape anyway. But as soon as like you see something, if you're ever in this situation, if anything comes on grid, just press F2 or whatever your mighty warp drive thing is. And you can see that actually saved us in a second. Because when the, the bomber uncloaks here, you can see I get all the newts on them and stuff. And then I, I blip me mighty warp drive, but I do get scrammed. So you can see there it goes, it's heated. I'm already doing like 2k MS. So I can sort of like drift out of his scram range and there it drops. And then we just heat the mighty warp drive again. Sinos lit, there's a redeemer. Oh, there wasn't a Razu as well. I didn't really say that when I was playing. So you can see we're doing like 5k. We're neutered out now. But we're, we're still coasting, right? We could have, I think we could have stayed on grid there and had a, a bit of a better fight. I was just a, a little bit quick on the warp, I think. But yeah, pretty cool. Just uh, going over the, just the, the super long point sub. So I think that's really worth it on this ship versus the, the other options you've got. Alright guys, just before we get on to the last clip from me, I just wanted to give a shout out to a couple of friends who have also been flying the Proteus. The first one being Babel, who is just an absolute monster of a PvP guy, just loves it. Uh, the Proteus, he recently did a video on and it had like a 72 or a 76 kilometer heated point, just showing the power of that subsystem. And Babel also flies in a, a small gang format, so it be, just becomes like exponentially strong in my opinion doing this. Uh, he's got real guns, might warp drive, you know, it's not an oversized prop. 
it's just a, a really good fit i thought i would just show you guys some different options you know just mixing that up a little bit and uh, yeah definitely check babble out very good content creator he's just got tons of pvp various ships and yeah give him a shout guys okay next up is saraf and he pretty much pews in potchven space but he's got a little bit of a variation on the the proteus fit still railguns though but a little bit more tanky and he's using all the the crazy links and stuff from the bifrost so this video is actually called links part three i think and yeah he does some crazy maneuvers i mean with the links and everything that point's going to be just heating out to like just ridiculous amounts of range and um, also going faster with the mighty warp drive because of the links and everything you can stay on grid a little bit more but yeah just wanted to give you guys a, another look at a just a different variation of the fits and things because it, it actually seems that people are flying the pro yes quite a lot at the minute i'm also maybe now that i've been flying it myself just noticing things but yeah saraf and bubble definitely check these guys out again the fits will be in the description if i can get a hold of saraf as well and um hopefully you guys will enjoy that all right guys hope you've been enjoying this proteus video so far it's been fairly fun to use and to make the video as well uh definitely check out babble and saraf like i just mentioned totally worth your sub and your time so coming up in the next clip which i believe is just a, a massive bot form which wouldn't surprise us um and the reason i say that is because you could say that the guy was like afk with his accounts or whatever or like separate accounts but I did notice some like weird behavior. And if you take a closer look. Uh, so basically what happens is I was scanning the Ishtars down. They were just sat there. Like they'd finished the site ages ago or whatnot. Had the drones out. And when I tackled them or whatnot. The drones would of course like auto aggro. But once the Ishtars then hit structure. The drones would then go to my drones. Like every single time. So I don't think that's like standard behavior for the drones. It would just like primary me basically the whole time. And I don't see why they would switch then when they go into structure. The, the Ishtars go into structure then to be attacking my drones. Which I just think is a bit weird behaviour. So I'm going to report all these accounts. If I haven't already by the time the video is made. And uh, yeah let us know your thoughts on this. So we're going to play some tunes. Let's get copyright striked. And enjoy it guys. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.